Hello everyone, so welcome back um, to this Advent Adventure, uh, this wonderful journey of Christmas, and um, we are two days late, I'm so sorry, uh, but let's get started with uh, day two, remember last time we went over the promise that God made us, like, like even before Adam and Eve were, um, like, were made to, uh, you know, they were, they were, uh, you know, kind of, like, pushed out of the Garden of Eve, of uh, Eden, Eden, I forget the garden name, but yes, they couldn't live there anymore, and God made a promise that, um, things would not stay the same forever, that, that he would send someone that would, um, you know, change things, that would free them from their sin, and that is Jesus Christ, which is, um, you know the main focus of, of Christmas it's it's in his name I mean it's in the name Christ you don't say it Christmas but it's 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 in there so it, it, we celebrate his birthday all right so let's see what uh, day two offers okay the Christmas miracle all right all right let's see what it says talk about a Christmas miracle after God first gave the promise of the Savior he began revealing specific truth about the king who was to come through human vessels. Prophets. More than 680 years before the birth of Jesus, God told the prophet Isaiah that the Savior would have a virgin mother and would be God himself in the flesh. The accuracy of this one claim alone is miraculous, especially given how many years the world waited for the fruition of the promise. But this prophecy is only one of 108 that were fulfilled through the birth and life of Jesus. In 1958, Renowned mathematics and astronomy professor Peter Stoner studied and calculated the chances of the fulfillment of messianic prophecies. He concluded that the probability of even eight of those 108 prophecies coming to pass is, conservatively, one in 100 quadrillion. That's one in 100 quadrillion. Just eight out of 108. This makes Christmas one of the most significant miracles in history. As we celebrate this remarkable holiday, Try wrapping your mind around the odds stacked against Jesus coming to earth as predicted. It's pretty much impossible to fathom. Our only logical response is worship, in gratitude and total awe. The word tells us there is no limit to God's power, and these numbers are certainly proof of that. He is worthy of our wonder. Prayer. Father, you are amazing. I can't even begin to understand how you wove the story of Jesus together before he was born. I am in awe of your infinite power and wisdom. Thank you for the miracle of your son. Help me never lose sight of how great you are. In Jesus' name, amen. That is such a beautiful thing. And math is everywhere. Numbers and, and probability and all those wonderful things. It's, it's everywhere. Everywhere you go. Measurements. All those types of things. Whether it's buildings, cooking, um, you know, um, building different things like a parking lot or how a car works it's it's math guys there's numbers and everything but to figure that out in in the ways of the bible like the probability of because it said it itself there's 108 prophecies that were fulfilled just by jesus being born uh the location uh the time uh, the his mother, uh, the conditions, it, it's it's beautiful. It's fascinating, and to to see that, like to think that these people had been waiting for like over six hundred years. It says right here, more than six hundred and eighty years before Jesus was born, God told the prophet Isaiah that uh, that Jesus would be born, the Savior. And so, imagine waiting 60 years, generations through generations. That's like five, six generations. And, um, you know, having to wait that long, no wonder people were excited to, to uh, you know, finally meet and, and hear about the Messiah, the Christ, the Savior that they had known about, that they had prayed for, they had believed in, and, and had been waiting for for hundreds of years. That is being patient that is incredible but yes may we never get over what he's done and may he help us never lose sight of how great he is because it's easy to forget that the creator of the universe 
is on our side, that he is all powerful, that he has a plan, that he is in control. All these things that are happening to you, whether good or bad, he takes them. He puts them in the plan. He makes it part of it. No matter how many times we mess up, no matter what's going on, good or bad, he turns it into a blessing. He has the power to turn tragedy, mistakes, flaws, all those stuff, all those things into a blessings to help us be shaped into the person he wants us to be, the person that he wishes us to be. He is a caring, loving father who forgives, who gives ch second chances. Look at your life. How long has it taken for you to come to Christ, to receive and accept him as Lord and Savior? You might have already done it. You're probably already a child of God. Think about how long it has it took you to get to that choice, to get to know Christ, to make that choice, to to decide to do so. What if you haven't received him? Well, how long, how, how old are you? How long has God been waiting for you to decide, for you to make up your mind? Because he's not going to force you. He is a loving father. He does, not, he does not force us into believing in Jesus, into believing in Christ and all this beautiful things he has done, living for a perfect life so at the end he dies for our sins giving us the example of love and sacrifice and just forgiveness and, and always praying and caring for others and being loving and you know serving and helping others all in the name of God spreading the word <sighs> getting baptized it's it's amazing having that relationship with God is only possible because Christ made it possible. He died for our sins. He made it possible that we are washed clean in his blood. We are sinners who are forgiven once we accept Jesus as Lord and Savior. And so it's it's very very beautiful, very amazing the power, the wisdom and how God is in control and how God himself left the throne. He left heaven and came down to earth to become fully man and live this life so he could die for our sins. So he could break the chains of sin. So we could be free and no longer be a slave to our sinful nature, but instead have the Holy Spirit, the Spirit of God himself. That is one powerful thing. That we humans have a God on our side. We have his spirit in us, in our body, in our heart. He wants to help us. He wants to be in control. He wants the best for us. But if we don't let him, nothing's going to change. You have to make that choice. And he's not going to force you to give up power. He wants you to choose. He wants you to have that free will. And so just imagine make, taking into consideration all those years, all that time. How long has he waited for you? How patient is he? Very patient. Very patient indeed. All right. I won't make this any longer. <laughs> Let's look at the passage. This is uh, Isaiah 7. Oh, beautiful. For the Lord himself will give you a sign. The virgin will conceive and give birth to a son and will call him Emmanuel. All right. So let's look at these um, little boxes. It says here. Oh, that's for highlighting. Oh, okay, okay. Therefore, the Lord himself will give you. Okay, plural. So that means more than one, right? A virgin or a young woman. Okay. And give birth to a son. He or son or they. Okay. And, and they. Okay. We'll call him Emmanuel. Which means God with us. Like I said. God left his throne. He left heaven. Came down to earth. Became fully man. He could bleed. He could cry. He could sleep. He needed food. He needed water. Uh, 
he he started as a baby this beautiful small helpless baby was god himself but also human like us and you imagine having a god who can relate to us relate to our struggles relate to temptation all these things that we need and want and desire he knows us he knows our heart and he is able to to understand what we're going through because he himself went through that jesus lived his life he lived 33 years and a half i think around that age living a perfect life without sin and he went through a lot people were rejecting him people who didn't like him people who wanted him dead um there were people that did believe in him that followed him that wanted to um you know have healing and and comfort and and just and just be near him there were also people that didn't like him right he was perfect but nobody was you know not everyone liked him so he he understands that being rejected not being liked being hurt these people were mean to him especially at the end of his life like i said he he died for our sins he had to die for our sins he was he you know he was supposed to die on the cross for our sins he that was that was the whole you know the whole plan that's the whole reason why you know that's the main focus the main point it's the core of christianity that jesus lived his life died for our sins on the cross and 3 days later resurrected he rose from the dead and is in heaven now not dead he's alive and he will come back to earth he will return his second coming to earth we don't know when it's going to happen we don't know the day we don't know the time only god father knows that however we are to be patient and alert and busy at work sending um the word the gospel the good news all over the world to all nations testifying of the wonders of god how he has changed our lives how christ has paid for our sins not just you and me but everyone else is everyone all human kind all humans alike because we are all sinners we all have broken the law of god we all fall short of his of his grace and only jesus is worthy worthy and perfect and just and he is the only savior we have he is the only person that we can trust in that has the power to wash us clean to forgive us so today i i want to invite you to to trust in god to trust in christ If you haven't received him then then I don't worry there's still time as long as you keep breathing there is time but I can assure you it's important to not take this for granted I used to do that I used to take things for granted my life my friends my family my home everything I thought this would never leave never end but as i came into the life of uh, a new life in christ because it changes you it's you're born again as soon as you accept christ as lord and savior as the person that rescued you that his death was enough that his blood is able to forgive to wash you clean to make you a new person if you believe in that and you believe if in christ that he is the son of God that he is God himself and was able to die on the cross paying for your sins and later resurrecting 3 days later and i can assure you that that you have faith because you were not there you didn't see it nobody was there the, to tell you the news of like hey you know i was there i saw it it's it happened you know it was that 2000 years ago that's how important Jesus was 
he changed time. 2,000 years ago, more than 2,000 years ago, he was born. And now he is in heaven and he is waiting for you to accept him, waiting to enter your life and change it and turning it into a blessing. Not only your life, but bless others through you. He wants to do that. He wants the best for you. If you are, if you are hurting, if you are sick of, of living this, this life where, where everything is, is pain and, and dark and sad, trust God. Trust Christ. He knows the way. He is the way. He is the truth and the light. It's not, it's not an easy life. It's not. But I can assure you that if you repent, if you turn away from your sin, if you ask for forgiveness to God Almighty, He who was able to become human and die for your sins, if you believe that He has that power, if you believe that Jesus is the Son of God, that He is the Savior that died for your sins, that you are able to, to you know, believe that, that if you have that faith if you accept him as Lord and Savior that he is the one that saved you that thanks to, to you believing in that you can know that you are going to heaven when you die because salvation is something that is free that we don't deserve the cost of sin is death we die spiritually without Christ because we are sinful because we do bad things because we fall short of God's grace we don't have Christ we we don't have that salvation but once we do once we believe in in Christ once we accept him as Lord and Savior yes I want you to be my Savior I want you to free me of sin of I believe that you paid for my sins and that you have made me justed, justified in God's eyes. You're saved. Because you want to change. You want to give up your life for God, for Christ. The price of sin is death. That cost. But Jesus paid for that. He paid in full with his death, with his blood. He paid for you. He paid in full. You don't have to pay. And to be honest, we're human. He is God himself. We are simply human. We could never repay. We could never even pay for our own our own soul, our own spirit. We cannot. We are so small compared to God. And yet God, who has everything, wants us to to be in heaven. He wants a relationship with us. He wants us to go to heaven and live forever with him. I invite you to to learn about Christ, to get to know him. And if you do know him and then you do believe, I invite you to give up your life for Christ. To give your life to Christ. So he can help you and and, and guide you. He is everything we could ever need, I can assure you. He is everything you could ever need. And I have learned so much to be thankful for every day because I don't know if I'll be dead in the next two hours or tomorrow or in a month or in a year. We don't know how much time we have left. I don't know how much time my family has. I don't even know if they're saved. That's scary. And I struggled with that, that fear of them not going to heaven when the time comes, when the hour is the final hour and we're in the last days. But I know that God has a plan. And if he was able to save me, if he brought me to Christ, to salvation, I know that he can do the same for you. I know he can do the same for my family. I know he can do the same for everyone. He chose me. And here I am. 24 years later after being born. 
I am a child of God. I'm I'm a daughter of the King of Kings, the Lord of Lords. I have the Holy Spirit in me. I have Christ in me. And I want you to have the same thing. I want you to have that powerful God at your side. I want you to have that joy, that hope, that faith, that living water, that holy bread. I want you to have eternal life. And if you already have eternal life, if you are already a child of God, I encourage you to share your testimony with others. I encourage you to share the word. I encourage you to pray every day, even if it's for two minutes, even if you follow a video, if you write it down, if you say it to yourself, whatever it may be, never stop talking to God because we need him. We need him so much, more than we could ever imagine, more than we could ever express. We need him so much. We are nothing without God. He is our everything. We could lose our health, our family, our home, our job, our sight, everything. We could lose it all. But I would still have it all because of God, because his riches are beyond this world. He has everything I could ever need. And if he takes care of sparrows, of birds, and flowers, how much more important are you? A human that was created in his image. A beautiful human that he, he formed in your mother's womb. When you were just not even a baby, when you were growing up in your mom's stomach. He made you. He selected you. He chose you. You are not a mistake. You are not an accident. God created you and he does not make mistakes. There's no accidents in God's plan. He does things for a reason. And as you get to know God, you will see how he has worked in your life. You will see the blessings. You will see his mighty hand in your life and in the life of others. Because even if we don't see it, even if we don't feel it, God is there. God is working. He is a God that doesn't sleep, doesn't eat, doesn't rest. He is at work 24-7, taking care of you, watching out for you, protecting you, waiting on you. Giving you a second chance, giving you air in your lungs, giving you eyesight, giving you movement, giving you health, family, providing each and every day. If you are not dead, you are not done. If you are a child of God, I need you to know this. I need you to understand this. If you are alive, God is not done with you. And I encourage you. To prepare your heart, to pray to God, to prepare your heart, to make you clean. So you can do this three word prayer. Actually, two. First one God, I surrender. Surrender to God. He knows best, He knows the future, He knows what's going on, and He wants the best for you. First prayer, surrendering all to God. The second one, most important dish, one that Jesus expressed with his disciples. Peace be with you, and like the Father sent me, I send you. That second prayer, that three-word prayer, God, use me. When God uses you, He doesn't just bless you. He blesses those around you. May God help you reach out to those near you. Whether it's a co-worker, or a friend, or a family member, or a neighbor. No matter who it is, even a stranger. May He give you the words to say. May He give you the courage. May He tell you what to do, when to go. The time, the place, I pray that the Holy Spirit speaks to you, that He guides you, 
that he helps you out and helps you understand whether you are talking to God or you're reading the word or you're listening to a song. May the Holy Spirit be with you and guide you every step of the way. May God be with you all. And those that are a child of, of God, I beg you, keep praying for those that are still lost. Keep praying for those that haven't met Christ yet, that are still out there in the dark. If you want to pray for your family, for their salvation, I encourage it. I myself have started watching prayer videos in the morning for my family salvation. It helps. It helps. My prayer life is not the best. I am not out there sharing the gospel, sharing the word. Everything I do is mostly online. Videos I see, shorts I watch, I share them on Facebook. I share them here and there on YouTube. Bible verses that I that on this app, I I share on Facebook. I share on WhatsApp. In my story, something easy, something short that people might click on on accident, get exposed to the word, and who knows? It's a little seed that you plant. And that is that is the most important thing about about being a child of God, going out there and planting. You might plant one seed and not see it grow or give fruit until years later. But I encourage you to make that effort of planting that seed. Maybe someone already planted that seed and you help it grow. Thanks to you, that, that plant might grow, flower, bear fruit. You don't know what's going on in that person's heart, but what you say might change their life. It might be the point of no return where they give up their life to God. Be faithful. Be strong. Trust in our Lord. He who knows everything. He who blesses us each and every day. Stay close to Him. Don't move away from him. Get to know him each and every day. Learn to love him a little more each and every day. I encourage you to keep close to him, to grab onto him, knowing that he will never let you go, that he will not reject you. He doesn't reject people. No, he wants, he does the opposite. He hugs you. He holds on to you tightly he doesn't want to let go he loves you too much he loves you too much to let you stay the same that's why he changes you he changes your heart he changes your thoughts but not completely because you also have to put your part remember God does not force us we have a lot of control there too And that's the thing. Sometimes we have to let him change us. Do not fight it. God will never hurt you. The things that happen in life are not all because of God. He doesn't make bad things happen. What he does is he takes bad things and turns them into blessings. He uses it. He doesn't let anything in your life be a waste of time or effort or tears. He uses everything as a blessing. The enemy is strong, but God is stronger. I hope you're trusting him today. And don't let the enemy win. Don't let the enemy lie to you. Don't let the enemy trick you. Trust in God, our promise keeper. Our light, our fire, our strength, our lighthouse, our Lord, our King, our Father, friend, brother, our everything. I hope you trust in God today and get to know Him a little bit more. And don't forget to pray. And praying is just talking to God. It doesn't have to be fancy. It doesn't have to be long. Thank you. Thank you, Lord, for this person. 
may you be with them today and forever. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen.